Are you constantly feeling overwhelmed, frustrated, and impatient in a world that's always in a rush? Do you find yourself struggling to stay calm and composed when things don't go as planned? If so, you're not alone. But what if there was a way to master the art of patience and find inner peace amidst the chaos? In this video, we'll delve into the ancient philosophy of Stoicism and explore how its teachings can help you cultivate patience, resilience, and a more tranquil mind. Lesson 1. Practice Tolerance for Discomfort Being patient is a trait that needs to be trained and practiced. Training your body to handle pain is one of the best ways to become more patient. This means facing problems and issues head-on instead of avoiding them. We become stronger and more gentle when we learn to deal with pain. Stoicism tells us that we will always feel uncomfortable in life. The outside world is out of our control, but we can choose how to react to it. We have two options when we are uncomfortable. We can give in to our anger and impatience, or we can use it as a chance to learn and get better. Putting ourselves in settings that make us feel bad on purpose is one way to practice being able to handle discomfort. This could be anything from standing in front of a crowd to taking a cold shower. We learn to deal with stress and become stronger when we put ourselves in situations that make us feel bad on purpose. Taking on tasks is another way to get better at being able to handle discomfort. When we have a tough job to do, we can either give up or do our best. Stoicism teaches us to face problems head-on and see them as chances to get better. We become more patient and strong when we take on tasks. Instead of getting angry and impatient when you're working on a tough job at work, try to see it as a chance to learn and improve. To make progress, split the job into smaller tasks and work on them one at a time. When problems come up, take a deep breath and tell yourself that this is a chance to get stronger and more patient. Also, keep in mind that learning to tolerate pain doesn't mean being a martyr or suffering needlessly. Realizing that pain is a normal part of life and learning how to deal with it in a healthy way are the main ideas. It's not only easier to enjoy the good things in life when we learn to handle pain. When we are going through tough times, we appreciate the times when things are easy and comfortable even more. We can be more patient and happy when we are thankful. Start small when you want to learn how to handle pain. You should pick one thing that makes you feel bad every day and do it on purpose. Try something new, like a different way to get to work or a new food. You should eventually make the challenges you take on harder as you get used to being uncomfortable. It's not about being perfect when you practice tolerance for pain. It's about getting better and learning how to deal with pain in a good way. Don't be hard on yourself if you mess up and get anxious. Take it as a chance to learn and get better. A strong way to develop patience is to get used to being uncomfortable. We become stronger and more gentle when we learn to deal with pain. We learn to enjoy the good things in life more and be thankful for the times when things are easy and feel good. Lesson 2. Set Realistic Expectations Stoicism is a philosophy that emphasizes the importance of setting realistic goals to avoid anger, disappointment, and impatience when our ideals don't align with reality. It encourages us to understand our own power and the possibility of change in life. By focusing on our internal center of control and acknowledging our free will, we can become more patient and set realistic goals. By breaking down our goals into manageable steps, we can feel like we're making progress and achieving our goals, even when facing challenges. This approach helps us stay patient and determined throughout the process. For example, if we set a goal to write a book, we could take steps such as studying, creating an outline, writing one chapter a week, and editing. This approach helps us stay focused and motivated, preventing feelings of impatience and anger. Stoicism also emphasizes the importance of being open to the process and understanding that mistakes are a normal part of life. Instead of viewing problems as reasons for anger or impatience, it teaches us to see them as opportunities for growth and improvement. As Marcus Aurelius said, what stops action moves action forward. This attitude can help us become more patient and strong, as failures often present lessons and opportunities for growth. Growth doesn't always happen in a straight line. 
and it's crucial to remain patient and determined during tough times. By realizing that setbacks are a normal part of the process, we can train our thoughts to be more patient and strong. Mindfulness training is another effective way to train ourselves to be patient and set reasonable goals. By paying attention to the present moment without judgment, we can identify when our standards don't align with reality. Learning to be patient involves setting realistic goals, being aware of our power, breaking down goals into manageable steps, accepting the process, and practicing mindfulness. By embracing stoicism, we can learn to handle life's problems with patience, persistence, and inner peace. Lesson 3. Reframe your perspective. Changing the way we look at things is one of the best ways to become more patient. Our impatience is often caused by how we see the world and the things that happen to us. We might think that problems are impossible to solve, delays are unbearable, and failures are proof that we're not good enough. Stoicism teaches us that we can choose how we see things and that problems can be used as chances to learn and grow. It's not what happens to you that matters, but how you react to it, said Epictetus, one of the most important Stoic philosophers. This sentence shows how important perspective is in shaping our lives. Things that happen to us are out of our hands, but we can choose how to react to them. We can become more patient and strong by choosing to see problems as chances. Practicing thanks is one way to change the way we see things. We can see the world in a better light when we think about what we do have instead of what we don't have. Practicing gratitude helps us enjoy the present and see the good things in our lives. It also helps us see problems in a bigger picture and as short-term hurdles instead of impossible problems. Acceptance is another way to change the way we see things. Accepting things as they are, without judging them or fighting them, is what it means to accept them. We make our own pain when we fight against truth. When we are stuck in traffic, we might get mad and irritated, which makes things worse. If we accept that things are as they are, and that we can't change the traffic, we can choose to react in a more positive way, like by deep breathing or listening to music. Acceptance also means realizing that we can't change some things. We can't change the weather, the business, or the way other people act. We have power over how we react to these things. We can become more patient and strong by focusing on the things we can change, like our thoughts, feelings, and actions. Focusing on our beliefs helps us change the way we see things, which is what Stoicism teaches us. Our values are the rules that we follow and the things that give our lives purpose. When we think about our values, problems can be seen as chances to live our lives in a way that is in line with our beliefs. If we value being kind, a tough customer might be a chance to be patient and understanding. If we want to be the best, we might see a loss as a chance to learn and get better. To change your point of view, you should first figure out what you value. Which morals are the most important to you? What do you want to do with your life? You should look for ways to live by your ideals every day once you know what they are. When problems come up, think about how you can handle them in a way that fits with your values. Always keep in mind that problems are chances to learn and grow, and that you can choose how to see them. Changing the way we think about things is a strong way to become more patient. We can see problems as chances to learn and grow if we practice gratitude, acceptance, and keeping our ideals in mind. Keep in mind that we can't change the things that happen to us, but we can change how we talk about them. Pick a way to react that fits with your values and helps you be patient and strong. Lesson 4. Reward yourself for patience. Being patient is a trait that you have to work at and practice. Most people don't automatically do that. It's important to praise and award ourselves for the work we put into becoming more patient. In this way, we not only reinforce good behavior, but we also push ourselves to keep learning patience. Setting small goals and having a party when we reach them is one way to thank ourselves for being patient. You can break a job that takes a lot of time into smaller tasks and make it your goal to finish each one as it comes up. As you finish each job, give yourself a moment to enjoy your success. This can be as easy as taking a break, giving yourself a favorite snack, 
or telling yourself something nice to celebrate your progress. Taking care of ourselves is another way to thank ourselves for being patient. Being patient can be hard on the mind and the emotions, so we need to take care of ourselves to keep from getting burned out. Some examples of this are working out, meditating, or spending time with people you care about. Taking care of ourselves not only helps us feel better, but it also shows us how important it is to love and care for ourselves. It's important to see and enjoy the good things about being patient. Being patient can help you make better choices, have better relationships, and be stronger. When we see the good results of our patience, we are more likely to keep doing it. Taking a step back to see the progress we've made and the good things that have come from our waiting is important. Reward systems should not be used as a crutch or a way to avoid the pain of learning patience. You don't want to avoid pain. You want to learn to handle it and grow from it. To avoid discomfort, it is important to use rewards as a way to motivate and promote behavior, not as a way to get away from it. If we want to be more patient, we shouldn't compare ourselves to other people. Being patient is a process that is unique to each person. Comparing ourselves to others can make us feel bad about ourselves and angry, which can make it harder to be patient. Instead, we should keep our attention on our own growth and be proud of what we've already done. Remember that being patient is something you do all your life. It's not something you can learn in a few weeks or overnight. As a result, we should be patient with ourselves as we try to become more patient. It's helpful to remember that progress takes time and that every step forward, no matter how small, is a step in the right way when we mess up or get angry. Rewarding ourselves for being patient is a big part of getting better at it. We can keep ourselves motivated to keep practicing patience by having small goals, taking care of ourselves, recognizing the benefits of patience, not comparing ourselves to others, and being patient with ourselves. Lesson 5. Take deep breaths. We often have the fight or flight response in our bodies when we are in a tough situation. This reaction causes a number of changes in the body, including a faster heartbeat, shallow breathing, and tense muscles. These changes can make us tense and impatient, which can make it tough to handle what's going on. It is said in Stoicism that the breath can help us calm down. We can start the relaxation reaction by taking deep breaths. This can help us feel calmer and more patient. The relaxation reaction is a deep state of relaxation that works against the fight or flight response. In the 1970s, Physician Dr. Herbert Benson at Harvard Medical School was the first person to write about it. As Dr. Benson says, the relaxation reaction can be triggered by many things, such as yoga, meditation, and deep breathing. When we trigger the relaxation response, our bodies go through a number of changes, such as slowing down our breathing and lowering our blood pressure and heart rate. These changes might make us feel calmer, more at ease, and more in control. One easy and effective way to start the relaxation reaction is to take deep breaths. Find a setting that feels good. You can stand up straight, lie down on a bed, or sit down. Close your eyes and let your body rest for a moment. Hold out your arms and put one hand on your chest. Hold your breath and slowly and deeply breathe in through your nose. Let your belly rise as you do this. As you slowly and deeply breathe out through your mouth, let your belly fall as you empty your lungs. Pay attention to how your breath feels as it moves in and out of your body as you do this cycle of deep breathing for a few minutes. Deep breathing will get easier as you do it more often. Try to do some work every day for a short time. Find a quiet place to do deep breathing. This is especially helpful when you are just starting out. You can find a lot of guided techniques online that can help you learn how to do deep breathing. When you're doing deep breathing, try to pay attention to your breath. Bring your mind back to your breath slowly if it wanders. It might take some time to get good at taking deep breaths. Remember that practice makes perfect and be kind to yourself. Taking deep breaths is a simple but effective way to calm down and become more patient by doing deep breathing regularly we can learn to keep our bodies and thoughts calm, even when things are tough. When you feel like you can't wait any longer, take a few deep breaths 
and give yourself time to calm down and recover. You might find that deep breathing helps you learn how to be patient after some practice. Lesson 6. Cultivate Gratitude Being grateful means noticing and enjoying the good things in our lives. It helps us be more patient by making us think about what we do have instead of what we don't have. When we are thankful, we are more likely to be happy with the way things are and less likely to get angry or impatient. The Stoics thought that being thankful was an important part of having a good life. Epictetus said, He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. We shouldn't dwell on what we don't have. Instead, we should think about the good things in our lives. Mindfulness is a good way to start developing thanks. Being present and fully involved in the present moment is what mindfulness is all about. Being aware helps us enjoy the world around us for its beauty and wonder. We can enjoy the little things in life, like the smell of fresh coffee in the morning or the sound of birds singing outside our window. A gratitude book is another way to help you feel more grateful. Write down three things you're thankful for every day. They can be big things, like your family or health, or small things, like a great book or a tasty meal. Writing down the things you're thankful for can help you keep your mind on the good things in your life and make you feel happier. Expressing gratitude to others is another way to grow in gratitude. When we thank someone for being kind or generous, we make them feel good and also feel more grateful ourselves. We can show appreciation by hugging someone, writing them a thank you note, or just saying thank you sincerely. Remember that being thankful isn't just about feeling good. Being grateful for what we have and the people in our lives is also important. Being thankful makes us more likely to look out for ourselves and another person. They make us more likely to be kind and helpful. It's more likely that we'll be patient and understand. Being thankful can help us get through hard times. When things go wrong or problems arise, it's simple to get angry or give up. We can find the strength to keep going though, if we remember what we're thankful for. When we want to keep going, we can remember ourselves of the good things in our lives. A strong way to build patience is to learn to be grateful. Mindfulness, focusing on the good things in our lives, and telling others how much we appreciate them, can all help us feel happy and grateful. This, in turn, can help us be more understanding and patient, even when things go wrong. Today, take a moment to think about what you're thankful for. Let that thanks help you live a more patient and satisfying life.